how's it going everything is um as it was yesterday nothing has kind of changed since then i feel for most of the world unless you're in some parts of mediterranean and maybe new zealand you probably feel a little bit more confident about the situation than maybe you know your fellow uh citizens of the world but regardless it feels like we are slowly but surely heading for the light there is a light at the end of the tunnel for some people it's light in the, the tunnel that comes with risk some people it's light in the, the tunnel that comes with no risk depends where you are or well, it depends how you view it right because i'm sure there's people out there who are just like you know what fuck it let's just roll the dice let's take the flip of a coin if i get it i get it i'm pretty sure some people would because you know sometimes you watch those apocalyptic movies and they're like oh when there's a big virus going around everyone stays in and hunkers down but in reality that doesn't really happen and people would much rather have the option of deciding to go out and live their life as they choose because i remember thinking that was true when i watched this documentary i think it might have been about chernobyl when the whole chernobyl series on hbo if you haven't watched that definitely check that i'm sure most people have watched chernobyl right i'm pretty sure it's not think it's a, it's not a new thing um but chernobyl was actually a, a real thing right so if you if you uh, do a little google you'll find it might be a hbo directed documentary i'm not too sure but i remember a scene in one of the documentaries where essentially it plays out like the series where there's a scene where they go and interview some of the people who stay behind who never moved right when the nuclear reactor exploded and they interview some of these old ladies who lived there and they were very matter of fact about the you know they had to i'm assuming suffer through the serbian war right loads of civil war happened in that region back in the day um maybe some soviet rule stuff i'm not sure um or fail my uh mid middle middle europe um history but they had to go through quite a lot when they were younger so their rationale was that this nuclear reactor blowing up isn't going to make them up sticks and move again because you know they don't have the means and they're not physically able to so if they have to die then it is what it is but they'd rather die on their own land that they've kind of fought so hard to like have and it was obviously shocking to hear someone say that like you know i'm not leaving but it was also quite um kind of refreshing to know that that kind of ideal uh sort of like selfless not self selfless i don't know whatever that is that kind of a picturesque sort of idea that we have in movies of how people react to disasters isn't actually true right because in movies sometimes well you there's always that one person that's the cynic no, there's always a there's always a couple of people in movies who are like self-centered and only looking after themselves right but the reality is that most people are thinking like that most people are malevolent in that regard right most people have like ulterior motives you see the whole thing that's happening with chris cromo at the moment about you know whether or not he's lied about you know having corona he's in lockdown in his basement um you're seeing people you know like that neil ferguson dude head headed now and go meet his uh booty call or bringing his booty call over to his house and fully aware that he's got the corona as well there's all these really strange things popping up and they're more they're more common than they are rare so it leads you to believe that you know human nature isn't necessarily what we see in movies it's not necessarily what our friends tell us into our face human nature when the chips are down is malevolent as fuck selfish and just you know um reckless in some way shapes or form in it maybe reckless is not the right word but have you ever went on have you ever gone on like um the wtf subreddit or even some of the public freakout stuff and you've seen how people you know interact with the world around them and how reckless some people are with their lives and the you know the kind of reckless abandon they go about things and the fact that they have no shame right they could be just shouting at some poor innocent girl working at a starbucks or a guy working at mcdonald's with all these camera phones out and not give a damn not even try and dial it back in or dial it down sorry they just go on and on you know acting a fool you know embarrassing themselves and their family and friends and then you realize okay people like that just don't you know they have no they have no regard for anything apart from that moment in time that they're living in it's just then then and now i feel wrong i'm gonna go and shout at you so maybe some of these people who are a little bit you know reckless with this whole virus thing are just like you know what i don't care i've had a good run we're all gonna die anyway because that's the only certainties we have in it right death right so we all know that's coming in some way shape or forms so they would rather do, have to die standing up i guess the term is which is an interesting point of view but i just you know I think the more that I've read about stuff in history, the more sympathy I have with people and how they react because I just think it's ingrained in us as part of our human nature, something that a lot of people don't want to recognize. But some people are just going to react differently from things. And I just think it's folly for, you know, the stay at home crew and the tattletales to be going around pointing at people who aren't doing exactly as you are doing. And as well, the pointing and tattletaling 
what is it serving who is it serving are you trying to you know bring them on your side or are you just trying to uh, make yourself look better by pointing out the, the the shortcomings of others and usually people like that always have the biggest closets in their room in it they usually always are hiding the most things so it's been funny to see how all this stuff is unraveling and shit and you know some of the stuff people are getting angry about when it comes to you know celebrities filming in their big houses and massive kitchens and saying that we're all going through this together like what do you expect them to say you know they're going through this thing with us like they're humans as you are right some of them might have got lucky some of them might have worked hard it doesn't really matter and also what did you expect did you think this person that you watch on netflix lives in a, in a you know in a one-bedroom apartment somewhere in some rundown town of course she's not or he right they're obviously going to use that money they get paid you know to live in a comfortable setting somewhere right with high ceilings and uh marble work surfaces you should be expected i don't know why people are getting angry at this kind of thing just really interesting it's like you follow these people you kind of give them your attention which then leads to them getting an increase in the money they're paid because you know you're paid relative to the amount of eyeballs and bums on seats you can put in and place whatever and then when they display um the rewards or the fruits of all this attention they're getting people get angry like oh my god I, you know, we're not going through this together we're not going through it you guys are over there it's like phew, such a waste of energy it really is it's just like come on of all the things to be worrying about you're pointing out that rich people are rich it's like oh, i didn't know that you know what i mean it's like i don't know it like and and if maybe it's just me too um it's like when you see a big bum on instagram do you get do you whack off and stuff i don't you just get conditioned to seeing stuff in it like i'd assume i i don't know you know i'm not gonna i'm not gonna speak to a 13 year old boy about seeing you know naked women's bodies but i'd assume if you put a 13 year old from like the 90s and a 13 year old from now and you know showed them a picture of a woman stark naked they'd have very different reactions right because one is being conditioned to see now you know in music videos and youtube videos all his life or for the majority of his kind of life where he was aware of the opposite sex that he was into and then you show someone the kid from the 90s who maybe you know doesn't have that much access to or maybe the 80s i say right where they're mostly you know those late night cable shows or the odd magazine here or there i don't know if that era probably is internet but it was not the same right they're definitely going to be shocked in a different way and oh my god fucking hell but nowadays i don't know man we see you've you know we've all got instagram accounts we've all got social media accounts you see these guys going into their houses with their kids with their friends blah 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 like you shouldn't be that surprised that people live well you know or people live a lavish rich lifestyle it should just be normal it shouldn't really trigger you that much i don't think so personally um you know mtv cribs back in the day was interesting because you never got to saw people's cribs because there wasn't a way to see it right mtv cribs nowadays would be quite boring because you know all kim's got to do is turn on instagram and you know she's effectively you know done an mtv cribs without having all the annoying ads and having to deal with producers and executives and shit so I don't know, but what do I know?